Hi, I'm Laura Palatin. I'm a spiritual guide and teacher, and I am going to tell you the truth about life and death. That's a pretty powerful statement to make, and I can see where you might have clicked on it just to see what kind of craziness might come next. But the truth is, I was doing a meditation, and a spirit told me it was time to get back to making podcasts again. It's It's been a minute, um, and this was the topic that I should share. And at first, I thought uh, that seemed like kind of a big, big deal, but I understand. Um, I understand why it's necessary, and, and I know it will be helpful. There are a lot of people on the planet right now, including myself, that are all here to help bring us back into alignment with where humanity is supposed to be. And that was the guidance that I got from Spirit was, um, the exact message was to tell the uh, truth about life and death because it was never supposed to be this way. And there's so much pain and misery and suffering in this world because a few men grabbed power and control and extorted people for their resources so that they could have this power and control because it was just a perfect storm. So what I'd like to do is first talk about the lies that we've all been told and why they were told, and then we'll get into the truth. So there was a time in humanity when we understood that we were spiritual beings having a human experience, that this was not permanent, this was not forever, this was an experience we were having, that we existed before and we will continue to exist, that love never dies. And I'm not saying that that was the easiest time in human history. It was just that we didn't have suffering based on the fear of damnation, which was invented by men to literally scare people out of trusting the belief systems that they had relied upon their entire lives. And there's a whole lot of evidence for this. I don't want you to take anything I say as just, oh, well, she said. And obviously, I'm not presenting myself as a person that's got a doctorate in this. I am a spiritual guide. I am a mystic. The word mystic literally means that I communicate with source directly. And I want to tell you, you are a mystic too. <laughs> you just don't necessarily realize it. But the idea that only certain people from a certain class that go to school can communicate directly from spirit and that you have to go through those gatekeepers in order to have communion with spirit, that is one of the many ploys that was used to separate us from our innate spirituality. And that's what I teach, innate spirituality, helping people reconnect with what we were disconnected from, remembering who we really are, because we've literally been dismembered from our natural connection with spirit. And that was done strangely in a way to protect us. So when the religious folks came along and really got serious about taking over all spiritual aspects of life, they got together with royalty. And royalty didn't have a lot of like people on the ground, so they couldn't keep an eye on everybody. But if you indoctrinate enough people into a religion, you don't need a lot of people on the ground because people will start reporting on one another. And the way that they married together the religions and the uh, patriarchy, the kings, is that the king said, look, you enforce what I want done. And then anybody that steps out of line too far, I'll send my soldiers and they'll kill them. And in this way, it was this perfect storm, right? So my ancestors were wise women. Wise women held a lot of power that religion wanted. Wise women were healers, and there were men that wanted to be doctors. Wise women were counselors. And of course, the church wanted to have you come in and tell them all your secrets because then they were later going to extort you. Sorry, it's just the truth. Because every member knew that the church knew every secret about them because they had confession. Obviously, they wanted to be able to administer sacred rites. So instead of going to the wise woman or the medicine man and having a gathering to celebrate a wedding, 
you have to go to a church and you have to pay and you have to rent the church. I mean, when you really look at how kind of insidious this is and how damaging it was for humanity to be sucked into this very obscene situation, it's heartbreaking. So I just want to talk about witches for a moment. Witches were invented by Christian men who wanted to take power away from wise women. Now, wise women did a lot in a community. They knew herbs and roots. They connected with spirit. They did matchmaking. There were so many roles of a wise woman that to knock them out of their position in a community meant that they had so many areas that they could take over. So what they did is they grabbed these women out of their homes. They beat them, knocked their teeth out, um, left them in dungeons, starved them. And eventually, when they were almost dead, but not quite dead, they would walk them through the streets and say, this is your witch. This is what happens to witches. So that's why you have this image in your mind of a woman with a broken nose and missing teeth and crazy hair and skinny because she was starved and beaten and, and then paraded through town. So when word of this gets out, that being a wise woman means that you're going to be a target of that, if you are a wise woman, you're sure going to deny it now. And if you were going to teach your daughter or your granddaughter about herbs or connecting with spirit or helping people, if you want your daughter to survive, you're going to tell her to follow whatever the men in power say, because otherwise you die. That's how powerful this is. The Catholic Church was in power in Europe for a very long time. They invented things like purgatory. Purgatory was invented exactly to extort money from families. So they would tell you, oh, your grandfather died and he had secret sin. And since I'm the only person that can talk to God, because if you try to talk to God, then you're evil and you're probably just going to reach through to a demon anyway. So you have to come to me. And let me tell you, your grandfather had some secrets and you need to give me X number of dollars to buy him out of purgatory. Yeah, yeah. And this fear of hell, which was once again invented by religion, because they had this, the carrot of community, they had the carrot of connecting with spirit, but then they had this stick of Satan and eternal damnation and they used that to scare people out of having any communication with spirit themselves they told them if you communicate with spirits well those are ghosts and they're evil all of this just to separate us from what is innate to us and to have more power control and extortion over our lives the more you look into it the more heartbreaking it is and we have just been going down these paths with these men in positions of control. And I'm not saying that only men benefit from this. There are women who are in on it. Some of them honestly believe that what they're teaching is important. There are men that believe this as well. Unfortunately, it's so dark and it's so damaging to our psyche that whether people believe it or not, it's time for most of us to start to wake up. And I know there are so many people on this planet right now, and we're all here just to help you realize what you've been misled with. So those are the lies. And there are many, many, many more, but I feel like I've spent enough time on them now to help you understand what we're up against. By speaking out, I am taking a concerted risk. Everyone who speaks out against this infrastructure of fear is at risk. But I know I am here on this planet specifically to do this work and you are worth it to me. And I hope that even if this is 
confirmation for you or if it's the very first time you're thinking about it, I hope you do more research. I hope you learn about the history of religion in this country and other countries to help you make up your own mind about what is true and what is not. So what I'm going to share with you now is what I know to be true. I've spoken to many people, those of us that come through with this knowing, this automatic connection, we all have very similar visions. And that to me is more powerful than all of the written down dogma and doctrine in the world, because we remember this. If you talk to little children and ask them before they've been thoroughly indoctrinated, what they think the spirit world is life, what they think life was like before they came into a body, you're going to find a lot of what I'm telling you to be what they tell you as well. Because this is what comes through from spirit. This isn't what's been handed down and taught by people who may not have your best interest at heart. So I remember my pre-birth meeting. Now you may have watched near-death experience videos or read near-death experiences, and they talk a lot about a after-death review where they look at what role they played in other people's lives. And this takes on a lot of different meanings and a lot of different forms, but this after-death review is pretty consistent with a lot of people. I remember my pre-birth meeting. We all had one. Almost no one remembers it, but I'm not alone. I know there's other people out there that do. So what that looked like for me was standing with my spirit guide and my team, and we were looking out over, it's so hard to describe it. The best way I can describe it is to say we were, if you can imagine, standing at a construction site, and we had something in front of us that was like a plan for the construction site. But instead of looking out at an open field, I looked out over time at my potential life. And I had specific things that I wanted to accomplish along the way. And what those add up to is my ability to sit here and make videos and talk to you fluidly. I was able to communicate with spirit from a very young age. I had spirit guides, called them imaginary friends, that took me on adventures out of my body. All through my life, my spiritual uh, experiences were v validated in the physical world. And Spirit has been incredibly patient and generous with me because I am very sort of analytical and practical. So all of this spiritual stuff has to make sense in the real world. If you watch any of my shorter videos, I like to share stories about my partner that just passed away four months ago and how marvelous he has communicated with me in my physical world to let me know he's still right here with me. And that's one of the truths. So back to my experience of my pre-life meeting. So not only was I surrounded by spirit guides and angels and, and people from my soul family, that's what I call them. Some people call it a pod, some people call it a cluster, but we definitely have a group of souls that we're interconnected with. And those souls are interconnected with others as well. You can imagine just a tree growing and growing. So when you think about ancestral beings, you can think about those both physically, like people that I'm related to through blood in this body, people that I've married into and who they're related to blood in their body, and also my spirit family, right? My cluster or my soul family. So we are interconnected exponentially. So as we were looking at this plan, and I knew that I needed to learn all these different skills and interact with different people. So while we're talking about it, when we mention a specific soul that I want to have an interaction with, that soul came into the meeting, and we talked about it, and we're excited about it. And then when their little part was over, they departed. And it was just a very exciting dynamic. You know, everything made sense. It was all exciting. Um, heartbreak included. Just seemed like something I could manage. If you worry about your life going specifically by the plan, 
one of the interesting things about watching this whole thing unfold is that if you've ever watched Mercury flow, that's how I saw time. So if you miss a connection, let's say, then it all flows in together so that you will make the connections you're supposed to make. You will learn the skills you're supposed to learn. You'll be at the right place at the right time to make the difference you're supposed to make. Even if you get completely off base and you think, ah, it can't happen now, it still flows together and things still happen the way they're supposed to. That's the truth. You are a spiritual being having a human experience that you planned before you came into this body. That's the truth. Heaven. Heaven is reuniting with your soul family when you're no longer in a body. Heaven is complete joy and bliss and happiness, understanding that every single person that you just left behind on the planet that may be struggling is doing exactly what they plan to do. Nothing is wrong. We don't get punished. It's all good. It doesn't feel like it, but that's because we make a choice to enter into circumstances where we can experience the difference between good and what we consider pain, which is also growth and also good, even though it hurts like heck when we're in it. And I am grieving my partner. So let me tell you, I know about pain and I know about grief. And I spend a lot of time every day deep in sorrow because my body, my soul longs for this person. And they can show me over and over, and he does, that he is with me. But there's still a part of me that's experiencing separation. And experiencing separation is literally why we came in to bodies. And if you can keep that in mind, I'm hoping it will be helpful. Hell. In your life review, you are going to see instances where you could have helped. You could have taken a slight detour out of your day and made a difference for someone else. And that, that can be very painful because when we have a life review and we relive those missed opportunities, we don't just hurt like we would hurt in a body. We hurt from both sides. So we are aware of the discomfort or even the agony we caused someone else. And that doesn't feel good. And that is the closest thing you're going to experience to hell. It's not forever. It's not eternal. It's a moment of understanding from such a deep love that it hurts to know that you hurt someone. I hope that makes sense because that's it. That is what they twisted and made such a tool to use against us. So keep in mind that everything I'm telling you, I'm telling you from the perspective of someone who's been able to connect with spirit my entire life. Since my partner passed away, the connection has grown wide open. There was a doorway. Um, I like to say he kicked the door in for me. And in my mind's eye, he reminds me that he kicked the door off the hinges. No more door, no more hinges. I have a knowing. But I want you to also connect with your inner knowing. If you're familiar with the chakras, we experience knowing in different places. For me, I feel it in my chest. When I was going through my process of breaking my indoctrination, that felt icky in my solar plexus and my, my abdomen. It felt scary to hear these things that I resonated with and that my spirit was saying, yes, yes, yes. But my body from indoctrination was saying, well, that's not right. That could be opening a can of worms. What if you're reaching through the veil and touching a demon? You're not going to reach through the veil and touch a demon, okay? I'm just reminding you. That was all made up to scare you. That was all made up to prevent you from rediscovering your truth. I hope I did Spirit Proud with this video. I hope that I communicated to you competently 
of why you have an attachment to the lies and why it's okay for you, even helpful for you to move forward with the truth. Because the fact of the matter is the more you walk in this truth, the more you live this truth, the more you open yourself to spirit and get communication flowing, the more joyful you will be, the less fearful you will be, and perhaps most importantly, the more likely you are to find yourself meaningfully and cognitively walking your life's path because you, like me, had a plan before you came here. And when we live cut off from spirit and cut off from our direct communication back and forth, it is very difficult to live the plan, understand that we are living the plan, right? Sometimes we live it and we do the best we can and we get to the other side and then we'll go, oh, okay, well, I see how that all fit together. How much more wonderful to have it all fit together while we're here. It is a very valid goal. Okay, we're at the end of the video. That means it's time for a call to action. So I'm going to ask you to subscribe. I'm going to ask you to interact with this and share it with your friends because I really do want this message to get out to as many people as we can help. Um, I have a couple of books on Amazon. I'm currently writing a book called Innate Spirituality, Remembering Who We Really Are. And the goal of that book is to help people break fear-based belief systems and get on that path of two-way communication with spirit so that we can more satisfyingly live these amazing lives that we're here to live. So look for that book in the future. I make daily videos because spirit gives me a message every single morning to share with you. So I make daily one minute videos that are on YouTube and TikTok and I have them over on Facebook, less likely Instagram, but I do post there some. But other than that, my call to action to really look closely at what you believe and what you practice for how it really resonates with you, how it helps you move forward with the life you want to live. Because if you still got some of those lies floating around in your head, that's static between you and spirit, and it's not helpful. I sincerely hope this episode was helpful for you, and I look forward to hearing back your feedback in the future. I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves.